Hey everybody, Aaron from bushhoggingservices.com. Uh, wanted to do a short video on some things to consider if you're thinking about getting into this business and maybe you've got a current job and you're not quite sure how to transition into this line of work if it's something that you want to do. I have a uh, friend who has been active in helping me uh, with bushhoggingservices.com and uh, that business is run north of here about 100 miles up in a more rural area where there's a lot of work but he is not going to be participating uh, or opening his business in that area he wants to do it more in the Tampa Bay area and so he's trying to find you know how to go from where he is to getting into this full-time because he's not super happy with his current job and really wants to be his own boss at his own hours and things of that nature so uh, I am actually on my way to go price a job for him we tried to do it last night together, but we couldn't because of traffic problems. So I said, hey, let me go out there and take a look at this customer's property. Uh, the customer is in Tampa and has about one acre, older gentleman, and I guess the, the, the property got away from him. So it is kind of the perfect size and opportunity for um, my friend to uh, take on that type of work to generate a little bit of income to help gain confidence in the fact that revenue is available in uh, the type of, or the niche that he wants to get into High in speed. this area. And uh, what he's looking at doing High is speed. not getting a tractor or a skid steer, right? There's a lot of guys that are High doing speed. that. Sorry about the, the background comments, it's from my dash cam. Uh, so uh, he wants to find a niche and you know, in order to fulfill a niche, you need niche equipment, and he's looking at the Ventrac platform because it's a mid-size uh, platform, but it has quite a few capabilities that uh, will enable him to uh, target customers that otherwise, you know, the guys with the skid steers aren't going to want because it's too small of a job, it's not going to pay enough, or their equipment isn't well suited for you know that that particular type of work uh, so really what I see for him is anything that is from uh, you know a quarter acre up to maybe five and any vegetation that is two inches or less uh, would be a primary type of customer the second would be for the vent track would be anything with a steep slope so pond embankments highway embankments uh, you know, maybe there's some community property that's, you know, that's steep that uh, most mowers don't want to get on or require some other type of special equipment that the Ventrac with dual wheels and chains can really flourish on. And then he's, uh, and also pond and, and retention pond maintenance. You know, a lot of the banks there are, are a little bit slippery and hazardous. And, uh, I know I turned down a job with my tractor uh, because I didn't want to put the tractor on that slope. I will go back and do it with the excavator and the brush cutter, but that's specialty equipment. So if that job is still available when I'm set up, I know that the customer has been unable to find somebody that can provide that service, um, which in turn signals to me that it is a premium service and I can get a premium rate for that service. So, um, you know, that's all part of the initial considerations, but, you know, he's available you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, he works four tens, uh, gets home late, leaves early, you know, so he's pretty tired by the time he gets home. So, you know, I, I want to help him, or I am going to help him if he decides to move forward with this, uh, by helping him with his web presence, uh, which we've already started. And then also, you know, just giving him advice on things that I've learned along the way in the business on pricing and things to look out for, considerations to make. Uh, you know, those types of things that tie very closely into, you know, how much work you're going to get, what type of work you should be getting, and what you should be charging for that work. So he can slowly build up to a point where, you know, he's busy nonstop on the weekends and making good money and then can transition away from his current full-time job into something else. And ideally, that's what you want to do. You know, taking a leap and quitting your day job unless you're like a superpower marketer, is a very bad idea, right? Buying equipment that you can't afford is a bad idea because there's gonna be months where you may not have any business and you still gotta pay the note, right? So 
you want to make sure that your current disposable income is sufficient to cover you during startup and during slow times. Now, I think for him, slow time is very, uh, will be a very limited amount of time getting started. And I think the slow time of the year will be pretty much dictated by the extreme weather in Florida, where it's just super unpleasant to be outside and he may, may just not want to work as much during the hot summer months. So uh, you have to account for that, but you need a realistic plan that says, you know, hey, month one, I'm not gonna plan on generating any income because I have to market. I've gotta go out and solicit opportunities. My website may not be visible to the search engines and it's certainly not gonna be ranked early on. The content isn't on the site. Uh, my advertising isn't getting out there. Although, you know, with social media advertising, you can run a Facebook ad and almost instantly generate phone calls, just so you know. Um, I don't use Facebook because I don't need to. I'm as busy as I need to be without any social media marketing at this point. I do videos like this, which do help, but this is also to help other people that are in my seat uh, just a couple years earlier and you're working towards doing something like this. This is still part-time work for me. I, I, I do it because I enjoy it, not because I need the money. So I am different than most people. Um, Hi, but you know, my friend wants to do this as a full-time business and be his own boss, you know, set his own hours, pick and choose the jobs that he wants, which is great. It is the exact reason why people go into business for themselves, right? Uh, to be in control of your destiny, of your money, of your day, um, it is really, you know, a pleasure to work for yourself if you can handle the stress because if you don't perform you don't make any money right it's not like you're, you're you have an employer there to cover you with a salary if um, you're not getting the job done so those are certainly uh, very important things uh, to consider um, you know eventually he'll get so busy on Friday Saturday and Sunday that it'll be time to, to transition away from or just quit the other job and that's how you should do it so Hopefully these give you some ideas of things to consider if you're looking at making a switch or a change in your life to being your own boss. And uh, if you got any comments, you know, put them down below and uh, you know, hit that like button and subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Okay, so here is the follow-up to the customer that I just went to visit in case you're curious. Uh, it was about an, probably two thirds of an acre that needed to get cut. It wasn't brush, it was like switch grass that gets about three feet tall, is really thick and dense, and would have taken two passes to do. Uh, you can tell the, the guy didn't have a lot of money, but uh, he's actually sitting on a gold mine. Uh, his piece of property is right in the path of development. I asked him if he would be interested in selling, he said no. Uh, but anyway, so um, I gave him a price of $750. He only wants it done once a year. And you can see his eyebrows immediately go up like, oh, that's a lot. And I said, well, because well, he, he said, well, that's too much for me. And I said, oh, that's no problem. Um, what what were you expecting to pay? And he said, well, I have a guy that's been doing it for 10 years that was doing it for 60 bucks. And he just raised the price on me to 100. So I guess he was price shopping a $100 quote to do two thirds of an acre. Uh, and the guy's coming from you know, probably 15, 20 miles away, brings his tractor over and does it for him. I said, if you're getting it for hundred bucks, you absolutely need to stick with that guy forever. Because if you want a commercial company to come out and do any work for you, you know, uh, the price I gave you is probably about right. Could have gone down maybe to 500, but uh, overall he wasn't gonna pay no matter what, as it turns out, because he's only paying a hundred. So uh, that's just one that's just not worth doing. And uh, that's the story.